welcome to All About Community. My name is Robert L. Harris, and I am your host. You ever heard the saying, let's go out to the ballpark? I remember when I was a little kid, I would hear that and get all excited. That's why I'm excited today. We are going out to the ballpark. We're going out to see the Oakland A's. The Oakland A's is a team that I have great reverence for because in 1989 and 1980, I had the privilege of throwing out the first pitch of two different games. The Oakland A's really is the cornerstone of what this community is all about. Originally, the Philadelphia A's, and then the Kansas City A's, and then in 1968, a bright light came about. And they came to Oakland, and since then, they have been shining. Do you know that in 1972, 1973, and 1974, all in a row, world champions, and don't forget, 1989, when the Bay Area was shaken, the A's were winning another world championship. Now, I've said enough about that. Let me tell you the real reason we're here. We have an energetic young man who is the president of the A's, Dave Cavill. Dave, welcome to All About Community. We're delighted to have you here, even though you went to Stanford. Well, I'm happy to be here, and I appreciate uh, the jive on Stanford. I know we got a little <laughs> big game rivalry coming up later this year. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Dave, uh, <clears throat> give us just a little bit about uh, your background. I know that you were born in Cleveland, and that yep. doesn't necessarily mean you have to root for the Cavaliers. <laughs> <laughs> but just tell us a little bit so that our audience is going to feel for you as a yeah. new leader of the A's. You know, I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, born and raised. And when I was 18, I came out to Stanford to go to undergrad, drove cross country with my dad, showed up, didn't know anybody, and uh, kind of made a life for myself out here. Met a girl from the East Bay, from Newark, and, uh, you know, married her at a family. Got started, actually, in baseball back with independent baseball, the Golden Baseball League, which I started when I was in business school. Did that for about seven or eight years. We had Ricky Henderson play for us. Jose Canseco had an amazing experience with that. Then moved over to soccer and spent seven years with the San Jose Earthquakes, building a new stadium, Avaya Stadium, down in San Jose, which has just turned out tremendous for the community. And then something happened. Yes, yeah, so that bright then, light I talked about. Yes, that it bright light. To shine. It did, and, and I, I ended six months ago. I ended up here in Oakland, and I'm thrilled to be leading the Oakland Athletics and our pursuit of a ballpark in Oakland. It is a fabulous time to be leading the club. It's very exciting. We have a lot going on, and it's just a great. Well, let's talk baseball. about some of the things that's going yeah. on. Let's let's lay it out. Mm -hmm. What's going on with the A's? Well, we've actually um, recommitted to the city of Oakland. You know, we have 49 years of history here. It's amazing. We'll celebrate our 50th anniversary next year in Oakland. And this whole offseason has been a focus about being rooted in Oakland. Our ad campaigns, all our commercials were done at famous uh, landmarks in Oakland. We did Lake Merritt. We did an amazing one just at Fairyland. We did down at Jack London Square. All these great commercials that have been really fun and kind of cool for our community to kind of rally behind. So that was a great thing. And then we did a seven-story mural World. In Uptown, it's on Webster and 17th. It's a war elephant, because, you know, the elephant is our um, mascot. Yes. And it has the city on its back, and it's incredible. And I got to tag it. We had about a 1,000 people out for a whole street party to launch it. And these are the types of events we're trying to do to actually showcase that connection we have with the community and the A's. So if I want to see it, I just, Webster is a one-way street, so yep. I just drive up you see, Webster you can't at 17th, it. and it's going to be there. Yeah, it's seven stories high. It's huge. Wow. Yeah, guys worked all night for like two weeks to make it, and they spray-painted it. It's an incredible addition. It's really a piece of artwork. It's amazing. Now tell me about this uh, renewed commitment to Oakland. Uh, as I said earlier, you've been here since 1968, mm -hmm. and we've had uh, ups and downs, yep. obviously, like any relationship. But tell us about this renewed relationship. That well, I think the way I see it when I came here six months ago was that Oakland is our great strength. This is what we have, our history, our heritage here, the great players like Ricky Henderson, Dave Stewart, who are from this region. All those things make for an amazing history and a reason to be supportive of the A's. And especially with some of these other teams that look like they might be leaving us, 
We are 100% focused. We want the community to know that we are going to build our ballpark in Oakland. It's going to be transformative in a positive way. Um, and I think it's something that's very exciting for the city. Now, I've heard a lot about uh, the various, and I know you're not mm -hmm. going to reveal it mm -hmm. at this particular time, the various locations yes. that the stadium may <clears throat> be situated. Yes. Can you talk about some of the concepts that have gone into... Yeah, yeah, you know, we're down to three sites. You know, one is at the Coliseum where we currently play. We could build a ballpark basically adjacent to the Coliseum and probably about 34, 35,000, so a little smaller, a little more intimate. So that's one location. And that has a lot of positives. You know, there's the great transit and infrastructure and parking, so it's easy to get to. Um, and so then another location is in and around Lake Merritt, kind of near the Peralta uh, Community College District. And a bar station. Is yeah, a bar station is right there, and that's an area that, you know, um, we think could be potentially successful. And then the third location is at Howard Terminal, which is near Jack London Square. Beautiful, iconic on the water. Um, maybe a little farther from BART, so it's something we're weighing the pros it's and cons It's only about a 15-minute walk. It's I not bad. I've done it. It's not bad. I did it with my daughter. It was I okay. I fish so. off of Howard Terminal. Oh, really? Yeah. That's fantastic. Well, it's be the, the sight lines are beautiful, and they have the big cranes there. It's an incredible location. So we think we have three great locations. We're working with the community, all the stakeholders, to determine the final one, which we will announce this year. And let's... let's Go back for a moment mm -hmm. to the Coliseum. What, yeah. what are some of the uh, specifics that are going on there in terms of uh, making the experience great for people who really should be out there right yeah. now? Well, we've done a lot of things this offseason to enhance the experience. Mm -hmm. One, we um, took the area between the arena and the actual Coliseum, and we created Championship Plaza. And we have all the banners of all our nine world championships, which is pretty amazing. And we also have food trucks, up to 16 gourmet food trucks with some of the best food options in the world you ever have. You have everything from, you know, faux noodles to um, chicken and waffles, everything in between. It's amazing. And fans love that part of the experience. So that was really a, a great thing. Whose idea was that? Well, I did that with the soccer team in San Jose. Oh. So we decided to take some of the learnings from that, try it here. The millennials love the food trucks. They love to have an open area where they can congregate. We have games for the kids, we have bocce, we have cornhole. It, it's just a great ambiance. And then we have a beautiful new $400,000 new video board out there. You can watch the game, so you don't miss any of the action. Great. So it's a great setup. What we also did in the stadium, we improved the West Side Club. We made it the Shad Park Tavern, which is actually the old name of our ballpark in Philadelphia. Right, right, right. We have all the history, including the bricks from Shad Park. And so that's another great addition to the actual Coliseum. It's something that fans have been really, um, you know, uh, experiencing in a positive way. So you're trying to appeal to different, I, I should say, all of the segments of society. Yeah, we want to be inclusive for everyone. You know, we have such a diverse and creative community, and we hope that the Coliseum or eventually our new ballpark can be a gathering place for all those people. It can be just a lot of fun. Well, I can see from uh, the energy that uh, Dave is espousing here and, and, and just watching his eyes as he talks about the A's that there's a lot of excitement going on with the A's and we're going to uh, continue talking with Dave, but we have to go to break. Don't touch that dial. Don't even think about grabbing that remote. We will be right back after this break. Bob Melvin's an Oakland guy. People love him. In fact, I think he could be mayor one day. Mr. Mayor, the police commissioner is out sick. OK, thanks. Get the lefty up. Will do, Mayor. Welcome back to All About Community. Again, my name is Robert L. Harris. I am your host. When we went to break, perhaps I was even more excited than Dave <laughs> talking about the A's. But Dave, uh, give us a little bit uh, more understanding of uh, how you're trying to bring in the different segments of mm -hmm. the community to come out and watch ball, uh, baseball. Well, you know, we've tried to create the Coliseum this year as a very open place. So one thing we did is the third deck for almost 10 years had tarps, so you couldn't sit up in that area. And so what we said, we're taking the tarps off. Anyone can come up here, $15 for a ticket. We've had discounted tickets for community members, and it's really been great that folks have come back and have experienced the Coliseum and 
even told their kids great stories of, oh, I was up here and I saw Miguel Tejada hit a home run or Jose Canseco or Mark McGuire. And so it's been a great way for folks to come back and be part of the experience at the Coliseum, and we're really proud of that. And, and that's very good. Now, can you really uh, help me a little bit in terms of understanding why do you have such great interest mm -hmm. in the Oakland community? Well, I think we see it as our strength because um, Oakland has such a diverse and creative community, and it's one that is really connected to our history as an organization. You know, we have 49 years here. We have many great players who actually are from this community who play for us. Ricky Henderson um, is, is my special assistant. I work with him every day. We named the field for him this year, and we had right. an amazing showcase opening day to name the field at the Coliseum, Ricky Henderson. Field. And I think he came out of one of our local high schools. Exactly. So he's from here, and you know, that's just an amazing thing. And if you look at some of the other players, Dave Stewart, yes. who's now on our TV show. He's one of our broadcast guys in the studio. He also has roots here in Oakland. And so what we're trying to do is bring everyone back together who has been part of building this great history that we have in Oakland. Bring them back into the fold, whether it's on television, whether it's naming the field after them, whether it's helping actually coach the players. And that can make a real positive impact and give people in the community a reason to be a fan and a reason to come out and embrace the club. And I understand that you have been very active yourself in terms of reaching out to various groups. Can you uh, tell us some of the groups you've reached out yeah, to? Yeah, you know, I actually have open office hours. So anyone can come visit me on Tuesday. You mean Tuesday. I can even come? Anyone, anyone. From like 3 to 7, people come in. And I probably met three or 400 people since I started. And it's, you know, anyone from... You know, a uh, shop owner in Jack London Square to a resident in the hills. All sorts of folks have come out and really told me about either their passion for the Oakland A's, what they want to see in the new ballpark, how they want to see the actual Coliseum improved. And this input has been tremendous. And, and I've just tried to channel these ideas, make these improvements as quickly as I can, because that open transparency and communication, I think, is so critical. And so the open office hours have been a great way to actually solicit feedback connect to people in the community, and really see the value that the team brings to Oakland. Do you get both young and older people coming in? Yeah, I've had I've had people who went to the first game in 68, and they showed me the ticket. Oh, really? I've had people come in and say, hey, you know, I'm only 16 years old, I just want an internship. I had a guy come in try to sell me insurance. We, we had a little bit of everything. <laughs> uh, but that's part of the excitement. And, you, and for me, I like meeting with people and hearing about their ideas. And those have been some of the best ideas. That's where the idea to name it Ricky Henderson Field came from. It came from an open office hour. And the idea to take the tarps off, so many people said that. And so I've just tried to channel that and make sure that we're responsive to our fans in the community. And I think that's created really a new way to help, you know, kind of run these clubs. And, and in terms of attendance, do you have any goals or thought about uh, how we can substantially uh, improve the attendance, especially from the Bay Area here, supporting the A's? Well, one thing we're trying to do is have like five or six really big nights where we do things like fireworks and we do community appreciation and we get community tickets out and get maybe people out for the first time. Kids, for instance, on day games and say, hey, these can be our pillar events and those can be an experience where the Coliseum is full because there's not a better experience in professional sports than the Coliseum full for a baseball game. The fans are the most knowledgeable, energetic, it's just something to behold. And so we need to do a better job making sure we do that and really embracing the community in a positive way. Uh, speaking of community, I understand that uh, there are three areas that you focus in in terms of community contributions, education, baseball and softball, and open pride. Yep. Education, what do you do in terms of education? Well, we have a mathletics program that we work through the so school. Said mathletics. <laughs> math so they're doing math, but they're using baseball and the athletics as a way. Not that must, bad. That must be something from Stanford. Well, I appreciate it, me, but it's, it's a great program. It's a great way to get the kids excited about math because you connect it to baseball. Absolutely. And, you know, you see the adoption rate in the schools is fantastic. The teachers appreciate it. And then we reward the actual kids who accomplish it, they get tickets, they come out as an actual class. It's just a great program to foster learning and use baseball as a catalyst. Wow, that, that that's exciting. Now, now, what about youth baseball and mm -hmm. softball? You, you sponsor teams or what? How we do, work? and we this offseason we um, redid Greenman Field, and so we actually renovated it because a lot of the fields have really fallen in disrepair. 
And so we're doing everything we can to make sure those fields are renovated, are a safe place to play, and that the teams can play there um, as much as possible. It's really important. And Greenman uh, Field is a very uh, interesting uh, field because right behind, if I recall correctly, Haven, used to be Old Haven's yep. Gore Junior yep. uh, High School, and it's uh, symbolic in the, in, in the sense that uh, uh, so many little league teams have come there. And so I want to commend you personally uh, uh, for your involvement there. Oh, uh, you. Again, uh, I have to go to break. <laughs> I, I wish there was some way to avoid that, but. Don't touch that dial. Don't even think about grabbing that remote. We will be right back with David Cavill, Oakland A's. These guys work hard to keep in their edge, and they find it in the most surprising places. You're out, CJ. Not today, Jackie. Not on my watch, Spencer. I don't think so, Billy. You're out, Jimmy. Not today, Susie. Nice try, Holly. Booyah! You never know where you're going to find that edge. See you. Snooze you, Rosie. Hello and welcome back to All About Community. Again, my name is Robert L. Harris and I am your host. I continue to be excited every time I look into uh, Dave's eyes and, and he talks about the A's. Uh, they, I know that the stadium has uh, created a lot of, contro not controversy, but a conversation yeah. about uh, what it's likely to look like. Can you t tell us a little bit about the design? Yeah, you know, we have um, kind of a different vision for it um, than maybe some of the more recent ballparks that have been built. We want to build a much more intimate stadium, 34, 35,000 seats. Think more like Fenway Park in Boston or Wrigley Field in Chicago, built into a ballpark village that really connects with the community. I think something that's very unique has not been seen really in this area, and I think fans will really embrace that. We did that with the soccer stadium in San Jose, and we sold out every game for almost three years. And so a more intimate yard I think would be awesome. I think that ballpark village concept is also something that is really important, and I think in terms of inside the stadium, it's important to have a great bleacher section. Mm -hmm. We have a great history of a bleacher section, especially in the old Coliseum right, before they built Mount Davis. And, and so we want to bring that back and have an amazing section that can be loud and really boisterous and really have energy that can be a home field advantage for our club. Now give us a little bit more insight into that village. You, you yeah. mentioned village three times. Yep. Now, what's included in that? I well, the, the, idea, like to be included in that it, the idea is that there can be restaurants, mm -hmm. small businesses, you know, bars, areas where people can gather before the game and after the game. Think a little bit like, you know, at t Park in San mm -hmm. Francisco, having an area around it that's got a vibrancy to it, that people are walking, that are they're there. And even on non-game days, there's energy happening around the ballpark. And we might even have a museum, actually, in the ballpark. We're thinking about having an Oakland museum around the history of baseball in this area. You have great players like Frank Robinson, Ricky Henderson. They could all be celebrated there. And that could be another reason for folks to go. And I've always been excited about uh, that concept. Uh, as a matter of fact, Cleveland has yes, that. That's right. Yeah, around Jacobs Field, right. around I call Progressive Field. And it really took an area that well, didn't have much economic impact. And now there are jobs there. And it's a great area for people, a lot of economic development, millions and millions of dollars every year. It's a real big deal, and I think it could be something here in Oakland that could really shine. Yeah, well, I want to personally commend you on that because I've, I've always thought that uh, having a uh, uh, baseball uh, park right downtown can be very exciting for everybody. Absolutely, and that's our vision of what we want to do. So Now, I know we touched on this before, but you talk about the championship plaza. Yeah. Now, how did you come up with that concept? Well, you know, I realized, you know, the Oakland A's, or the athletics in general, we have nine world championships. Wow. Only the Yankees and the Cardinals have more. So I was like, you know, we need to celebrate that. I think a lot of the younger fans don't even know that. So we decided to actually fly the nine banners of the nine championships. And they're above you, kind of on above the concourse. And then we have the area below it with the food trucks and kind of the areas with the bocce and the cornhole that you can kind of hang out in the video board. And it's just a fun area to congregate in, and we celebrate our great history, which I think is a really important thing to do. And so we're really happy how that turned out. And let's see, one, two, three, 
four of those championships right here in Oakland. Three in a row in the 70s. <laughs> Only us and the Yankees have done that. That is a, that's a very high bar that, that we got. That is incredible. It is, it is. Absolutely. And I was so happy in 1989 when we whipped the Giants. You know, it was a sweep. The Bay Area was shaking. It was, but it was, <laughs> it was a sweep. We had the brooms out. The brooms were out. So it was, it was good. good. Mm -hmm. uh, David, is there anything else um, that uh, you'd like to tell us about uh, this exciting uh, partnership Oakland is going to have with A's? You know, I would just like to say that, you know, I, since I've been here for six months, the community has been so positive in the reception of what we're doing and really open and thankful. And so it's, it's just been a great experience for me personally. So I want to thank all the residents and the community for kind of getting behind our vision for the new ballpark, for everything we're doing even now at the Coliseum. Because it's going to be an exciting journey, and together, I think we can do some awesome things. And most of all, uh, Dave, uh, we want to thank you. We want to thank the A's. It is uh, always, always heartfelt when you find an entity such as the A's, willing to come in and embrace the community. Uh, we love the A's, at least I certainly love the A's because I've had good experience with them. And I would uh, encourage all of you, when you think about community, Think about the Oakland A's. Dave, it has been a pleasure having you. No matter what you do, no matter what you say or how you say it, at the end of the day, it is still going to be all about community. Thank you for joining us, and thank you to the Oakland A's and its president, Dave Cavill. We're bringing back fireworks night. It gives the fans a chance to get on the field. And isn't that everyone's dream? It's my honor to present to you the key to the city of Oakland. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, boys, let's do this. Yep, that's what everybody dreams of, a chance to get on the field. Welcome to All About Community. My name is Robert L. Harris, and I am your host. I continue my excitement when I talk about the Oakland A's. The Oakland A's is a team that is right here in Oakland. It is a valuable asset that we have. Today I'm talking with uh, Tosh Toshombe. Uh, Tosh is the Director of External Affairs for the A's, working right out of the office of the President, working right with the President. I've had the President on this show. And I can tell you, he is an excited man. But with every excited man, is also an exciting director of external affairs because they make the world go round. Absolutely. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Tosh. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Tell me, how long have you been with the A's? Well, I'm new to the organization. Uh, I've been there just a tell uh, shorter than Dave. Started in January of this year, uh, working with the team. Now tell me some of the things you did before you went to the A's. Sure, well, I'm an Oakland native, and many, many years ago, I interned for the A's in special events and promotions, so this is a homecoming of, of sorts, coming back to the organization, uh, working in the front office, uh, but I've cut my teeth in marketing and branding in the Los Angeles area. I've worked for companies such as Toyota, Hilton Hotels, and Hyundai, to name a few, before starting my own company in um, advertising. I've been a marketing executive at, at the aforementioned organization. And you've also been an intern for Congresswoman Barbara Lee, is that right? That's correct. I also worked for Congresswoman Barbara Lee uh, many moons ago and uh, helped Sanjay Andrews uh, run constituent services and, and do many things in our... And that's why you're such an outstanding young man. Now let's Absolutely. get to, uh, to the uh, nuts and bolts of the A's. Sure. Uh, tell us, uh, how can, if, if I'm interested in... Uh, taking advantage of some of the community service projects that the A's involved in. What do I do? Sure, well, the A's are very, very interested in establishing a lot of community outreach right now. And my role is to be an ambassador to the team and help facilitate and evangelize our message that you uh, helped to, to learn about uh, with your viewership with Dave when he was on, on air uh, recently is to essentially allow individuals to know that the A's, are, the A's are here, we're listening to the community to find out the things that uh, the A's can potentially support in the community and can lend a hand to or lend service to. So what I do is I'm a liaison for the organization in that regard 
to, to be a bridge from our community stakeholders back to the organization. Uh, so there are many ways you can contact us. You can go to athletics.com and find uh, many links and references to programs that VAs are involved in, uh, as well as uh, following us on social media to stay abreast on all the things we are uh, essentially doing throughout the season. So one of the ways is to go to the uh, internet, athletics.com. Can I just put in A's.com? Actually, no, you have to spell <laughs> athletics. Well, what if I can't spell it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what to say. <laughs> then I'm left out. Uh, but uh, seriously, if you go to Google and even if you misspell athletics, it will come up. Yes, yes. I tried it. That's oh, why okay. I know. <laughs> yes, we're not hard to find. And not they, hard to find at all. Now, uh, when you say uh, you go to various uh, constituencies to talk about the programs of the sure. A's, any particular program of the A's that you tend to talk about more than uh Sure. Well, at this particular juncture, a lot of our focus is to reestablish our community investments. And recently we conducted 510 Day at the Coliseum where we recognized uh, Oakland Parks and Rec Regina Jackson and EOYBC, to name a few. And in doing so, we want to acknowledge the great work of many organizations in the Bay Area and bring more awareness to them, in addition to allowing um, our fans of the organization to participate in those organizations and find opportunities uh, that we help to sponsor or to promote uh, ticket giveaways to individual groups and volunteerism and things of that nature. Well, the ticket give giveaways, I, I think, is a good one, especially for our young people. If our young people, well, let, let's say certain community uh, type programs, such sure. as EOYDC or some other nonprofit organization, sure. is interested in getting some tickets for their uh, youth. Absolutely. Well, again, do they call you? Sure, they can contact me directly at the A's, and I work directly with our community relations department. Uh, to help facilitate um, the gifting to certain organizational groups for uh, tickets and things of that nature. So yes, I am available and my contact information can, can be distributed. And in addition to that, we are very involved, as, as you discussed with Dave, in youth sports, mm -hmm. uh, education, and Oakland Pride. So with that in mind, a lot of our focuses are to support elements of the community in those three categories. So we're working with uh, Oakland uh, Unified School District and um, the Mayor's Office on Oakland Promise. Right. And <clears throat> we essentially, the, the third deck, the view level seats in the Coliseum, uh, a percentage of those proceeds go to support Oakland Promise. And that's a very significant initiative that uh, the A's are looking to, to partner and shed more awareness to the community. Now, when you mention the word Oakland Pride, uh, specifically, why did you guys choose that name, Oakland Pride? Sure, well, as our recent advertising uh, campaign has helped to emphasize, is that we're rooted in Oakland. And one of the things that, that I like to, to coin the phrase is we're permanently rooted in Oakland. And I think that's important for the individuals in the community to know. So the good deeds that we're looking to perform in the community aren't just temporary. They're not things that we're doing uh, for just more media gratification, but to really help bring more awareness to the, to the things that are happening in Oakland and how we can potentially uh, make an impact in the areas that, that we can. So that's what that emphasizes on, and I think you know, moving forward, the goal is just to continue uh, to be more of a bridge for the community. So, uh, when, when you mention Oakland Pride, it's that you have great pride in the fact that you've been here for 49, almost 50 years, Absolutely. and you consider yourself to be uh, a part of the community. Absolutely. We're, we're a part of the fabric of this community, and we want to be here indefinitely. So, that's my role, is to help us emphasize that and be the consciousness of professional sports in this town moving forward. And so when, 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 when a person comes out 
to see the Oakland A's win the World Series this year, uh, they're coming out with great pride. Absolutely. They know they have a team that really believes in Oakland. Absolutely. And not just here to take advantage of Oakland. Not at all. Not at all. We are reaching out to the faith-based community. We're reaching out to youth sports groups. We're reaching out to the Alameda County Food Bank. You name it. We're, we're here. We're listening. And we want to be a bridge and a resource to our community as a well. whole. And that's why the Oakland A's, the Oakland A's, no matter how you look at it, is trying to be a neighbor of choice. And that's what every group wants to be, or should want to be, Absolutely. a neighbor of choice. Absolutely. I wish I had more time, Taj, to talk with you about the A's, such that's an okay. exciting subject. But we do have to go, and I would again remind the audience that the Oakland A's is our team. They're here for us. So in the final analysis, no matter what we do, no matter what we say or how we say it, it is still going to be all about community. Thank you for joining us and support the Oakland A's.